Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're gonna be talking about the new denial of service vulnerability in integer conversions in C Python. I'm gonna colloquially refer to it as int_dos. It doesn't have one of those fun names like Heartbleed or whatever. So that's what I'm calling it for now. Uh, but I wanted to go over the changes that are going to happen in Python as well as the vulnerability itself. Uh, so let's jump into it. Okay, so the problem that was uh, well found a long time ago, you'll see the CVE number is 2020. Uh, here's the issue on CPython. Uh, is that there is a denial of service when converting very large integers back and forth between strings. And this is because the algorithm for converting numbers is quadratic in time. So this means that it grows you know, super linearly to the length of the integer. Um, and I just wanted to show some of those, uh, some examples of that. And we're just gonna be converting an integer that's of a very large string. Uh, I'm just gonna build the string with multiplication because that's probably the easiest. You'll see at this size, it takes you know, 56 milliseconds. And if we make it bigger, it takes a little bit longer, four, four and four-ish seconds. Uh, and if we do it again, it's gonna take even longer. Now, the unfortunate thing about this is you can't actually control C it while it's in the middle of this, and that's because it's in some C code that doesn't you know, check the little signal handler thing uh, to raise keyboard interrupt. It's in an uninterruptible state at this point. You, of course, can interrupt it with you know, sig quit or sig term or whatever uh, to actually kill out of it. I use control backslash to trigger that there. Um, but this is kind of the, the core of the vulnerability, and also just to show that it's not uh, it's not just the string time being built here. The string gets built very quickly, you know, 13 milliseconds to build the string, but some amount of time larger than 16 seconds because I'm impatient <laughs> to actually do the integer conversion here. Uh, and this problem also occurs in the other direction. So if you're stringifying a very large integer, this is just a big, a big left shift here to get the number to be bigger. Um, you'll see that it takes, you know, about one second versus one digit fewer was was less than that. Oh, this is gonna take significantly longer, I think. Anyway, I'm not gonna wait for it to finish. This one is interruptible. I don't quite know the difference between why this one is, why stir is, but int isn't, but you know, I didn't look too much anyway. Anyway, that's the core problem with this, is that conversion back and forth between int and stir takes quadratic time. And so if you're parsing very large integers or converting very large integers into strings, uh, you're potentially susceptible to a denial of service attack. And since integers could be parsed from a whole bunch of different sources and you would have to sort of find all of those, patch all of those, and you know, potentially add this kludge everywhere, it would be really complicated to solve this problem holistically. So what Python decided to do is add a, a limit to how large integers can be that's configurable by the runtime. So uh, I've gone ahead and compiled the, uh, let's grab this one up here. I've gone ahead and compiled the latest Python, which has implemented this integer limit. And you'll now see this value error if it needs to do the conversion. Uh, you'll see here that it says, you know, exceeds the limit 4300 for integer to string conversions. Now, peculiarly, it actually knows how many digits it's supposed to be, which, uh, I assume this is done via some logarithmic uh, conversion shenanigans, because like otherwise it would have to compute the whole digit, the whole uh, <laughs> the whole number, which would defeat the whole purpose. But anyway, uh, you'll now see this new value error if you try to convert large numbers back and forth between strings. And this number can be configured. So if we were to let's actually just pick a number that's smaller. Uh, if you set the Python Python int max stir digits uh, environment variable, you can configure how large integers are. So you can see if I've set it to a large enough number, uh, we won't exceed the limit there. Now, of course, if you set it to a smaller number, uh, we still exceed the limit. You can also uh, turn off this behavior and set it back to the original Python behavior by setting this environment variable to zero, zero being unlimited here. Uh, this is also available at runtime, so if you Look at this using the sys module. It is git int max stir digits, as well as set, oops, oh, I have broken, there we go. Set int max stir digits. And so you can uh, get and retrieve this value if you need to configure it that way at runtime. 
Uh, but anyway, that is the int DOS vulnerability as well as how Python has chosen to mitigate this. Uh, this patch is going to be backported to 3.7, 3.8, 3.9, 3.10. It will be in the, the final release version of 3.11, as well as 3.12 and going forward. Um, so look out for a new patch version. <laughs> it is a little bit funny that a new patch version is going to introduce not only a breaking behavior, but also new APIs. So a little bit weird, but you know, security patches tend to not follow the normal semantic versioning. Uh, I did also want to talk about how to mitigate this if you're not able to upgrade, which Unfortunately, this is going to be pretty tricky to, to mitigate. Uh, you'll basically have to check every place that you're potentially parsing an integer. And some of them you'll have no control over, like third-party libraries and such, uh, and add length checks to your inputs. Now, uh, I think you probably aren't going to get billion-digit integers. And you know it'd be pretty easy to say, like, oh, this URL parameter can't be more than you know, 10 digits for, uh, for an integer and like, you know, prevent things that way. But you're, it's going to be really difficult to control every single input to your system. And so you probably will need to wait for uh, this patch. Uh, a lot of operating system uh, vendors will backport this patch. So even if you don't see the latest patch version of the Python version you're using, you'll probably have this fix anyway from them. Um, but anyway, uh, sanitize your input when you can is the only advice I can give beyond upgrading. <laughs> Uh, hopefully you found this interesting. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.